Now that you have heard us separately explain to you how Puppet and Chef work, let us put our presentation to an end by comparing the two tools to each other. Researching for the presentation, we have split the platformers between the two of us, and for some time neither of us knew how the other platform works. Having gone through the research phase, we sat down to exchange knowledge and straight away we have started noticing commonalities between the two products. Both share quite a similar logic, both have been competing with each other for the market share for quite some time. Puppet, for example, has been around since 2005, Chef has been around since 2009, and they naturally grew with the market, adding similar features along the way. You'll actually rarely find yourself in a situation where you have to choose between Puppet or Chef based on their features. It's more about what approach you are more comfortable with, declaring the configuration or coding it. But we'll get back to this thought later. First big commonality is the architecture. Both tools have a master client architecture, which means they have a centralized hub that keeps track of all the managed nodes, all the data and all the code. In each case, Puppet Platform and Chef Infra Server, that's what they're called. Both support cloud servers and have a powerful integration with AVS and Azure. Both have master replicas, meaning a backup server just in case a master goes down. However, Puppet, lets you have a multi-master architecture to balance the load and make your scaling options almost unlimited. Chef doesn't support that. Both platforms have a tool responsible for accumulating node-specific data. Chef's OHI gathers attributes, while Puppet's Factor collects, well, facts. Both allow you to go beyond predefined lookups, like for example number of nodes cores, and define custom, application-specific scopes that you can then base in-code decisions on or just sort to have a front-end overview later. Another commonly used architectural element is a code repository that defines configurations across the infrastructure. Even their names are alike. One is called Control Repl and the other Chef Repl. Both repositories are version controlled, for example by Git or CVS. Both Puppet and Chef allow you to store your code outside of the central hub, so you can let GitHub or Bitbucket take care of that as long as master has access to this repository. One of the most fundamental pieces of Puppet's and Chef's architecture are the configurations that you describe. Puppet calls them modules, Chef calls them cookbooks. Modules consist of manifests, and cookbooks, as the name suggests, consist of recipes. Obviously, modules and cookbooks are reusable. They can depend on each other as well to avoid code copy-pasting. Recipes and manifests can also have a complex hierarchy of classes sharing data and functionality to ensure a readable and optimized code. Nonetheless, there is no need to implement all the logic yourself. Both platforms offer you a community-driven collection of modules, which you can tune with your specific config and use, barely having to write any code yourself. These catalogs are called Puppet Forge and Chef Supermarket. As you can see so far, Chef and Puppet offer you the same architectural concept and let you accomplish the same tasks. So how do you choose between one or the other? Although both platforms are implemented with Ruby, only Chef uses Ruby DSL as a base for coding your configuration. This means that any Ruby developer would only need until the afternoon to find himself into the Chef project and start implementing new configuration units or extending old ones. On the other hand, Puppet's modules are written with a custom declarative language called Puppet DSL. Whilst it will take a fairly longer time for a developer to get an overview on how it works, system administrators might be a lot more comfortable with it. Puppet DSL is very similar to the standard declarative languages like XML, making it sysadmin friendly. Having said that, you might want to use Chef if you have to implement complex configuration management scenarios since you can unleash the whole power and functionality of Ruby language when implementing a recipe. The downside to it is that Chef has a higher entry threshold and getting there takes much more time for non-Ruby developers. Having to write your code in a strict declarative language has its benefits as well. Not only is it easier to get started with Puppet, it is also more efficient among large teams. Configuration code will be kept consistent among the project as Puppet has built-in constraints and code style. To sum it up, both companies are doing a great job expanding their ecosystems in respect to DevOps needs. Using Puppet is like writing the server configuration, whereas using Chef is like coding the control of the nodes. 
Puppet is beloved primarily among the sysadmin community for its simplicity, whereas Chef takes a programmer's approach in the world of configuration management. In the end, there is no right or wrong. It's whatever floats your boat.